Good afternoon. Well, a number of you have been asking me about doing a, a tutorial on how to use quick set levels. And so what I thought we'd do today is show you how to do what's called flying leveling or series leveling. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to plot a cross section of a garden. So in this garden you can see that we've got an area that goes down, across, comes up for the drive and then goes down again. So we've got to plot a series of key points which will show us a clear sort of indication of what's happening so that we can work out things like cut and fill. We may want to do a cross-sectional drawing uh, or in some cases you may want a bridge or something like that to go over an area. So there's lots of reasons why you might need to know the levels. So in this exercise we're going to use, obviously we'll have the tripod, we'll have the quick set level itself, we'll have a leveling staff but we're also going to compare it with the mower shore that's a device which takes as a series of readings you connect to your phone and will plot a cross section for you as well the other thing i've got here of course is a way of recording the information we're going to we're going to be booking the detail or recording certain points and so what i've done i've just created a grid on the first reading we call a back site just because we're looking back when we take our first reading to the first measurement. So we're generally, we're, we're looking backwards. Um, the last reading is what we call a foresight because that's looking forwards. And all the ones in the middle are what we call intermediate sites. So we'll just put IS there. We then need to show whether it's a, a rise or if it's a fall. And then we have what is called the reduced level, what the, the, the actual running level is, if you like. And then we put in the distance, so how far across it was when you took that reading. And then we sometimes have a final comment column for remarks. For example, it might be the top of a manhole, it might be something else. So it just helps us to identify where that level was taken, okay? So that's the sort of that's how we record the information. Set the quick setup in the middle of where I'm working so I can see all the other points. So that's why they call it flying leveling. It can be done quickly. So you set it up in the middle. Obviously, you can sink it into the ground if you've got soft ground. This is quite, seems quite sturdy. I've set it at my eye height so it's nice and easy to take the readings. And then if we scroll around to the side, you'll see what I've got there, you can see I've put a levelling staff at the zero point and I'm going to take that reading and then I'm going to take all my intermediate site readings and then we're going to end up with the final reading which if I just zoom around there a little bit you can see it. You can see over there just beyond the maple tree and then we'll plot a cross section. So let's have a quick look at the first reading. So I'm going to have a look through and Remember that first of all you've got to get your instruments set up right. Uh, uh, click the link below to see how to on tutorial number one uh, leveling. Tape has been stretched so it's nice and even so we don't follow the contours because that's going to make the horizontal reading incorrect. So we'll take our first reading, we'll have a look. And you'll be able to see there that that is 2.1. 2.184 okay let's have a look how we book that information so I've got my board so on my board it's a back site 2.184 okay um, the distance is zero uh, the remarks are bottom of wall okay bottom of wall and that's my first one. What we do in the reduce level, we just put a number in there. I usually use a number 10, and that's to stop things when we start taking away it going into negatives and positives. Um, so we just put the number 10, some people use 100, but 10 is fine on a small area like this. It's only going to go up and down about two meters. Okay, and that's the first booking of the first reading. Now I'm going to take the next reading at the bottom of this wall which is sort of almost horizontal if you like so we'll take that reading now measuring along the tape 
The distance along the tape is 4.8 meters. That goes into that column. And then what we'll do is we'll take the reading, okay? Looking at the reading, I turn it round, all done from one place. Have a look at the level. Get my focusing screw on the right, get that. Make sure my stadia line's there, and that is 2.142. So I'm going to fill that in on my chart. That's an intermediate site. We drop down to the next line, 2.142. Okay, and what we normally do is we take the second reading from the first, 2.184 minus 2.142. So that means if it's positive, it means it's a rise. If it's negative, it will be a fall. Okay, so this is going to go in the rise column. So we've got 0 0.042 of a rise because it's positive. So if you take, always take that one from that one, that one from that one, that one from that one, and so on. So now what we do is we add that to reduced level. So it's 10.042 because it's a plus, it's a rise. So we add it to the reduced level. Okay, we're gonna go do the one now at the top. So that's gonna be at the top of that. So the next reading on this we got was 1.66. Again, we use this and it goes into this column, intermediate site on the next line, 1.66. So on the measurement this time, we've got a reading across of 5.2 meters. Okay, we had a reduced level reading of 1.660. So we take the, this one away from the, the one above and we get 0.482. It's positive, so it's a rise. So we're gonna add that to the total, 0.482. I'll just drop it in there for a minute. So you can see we've got four, two, one, 10.124. Okay, so that's the next reading. So that was the in intermediate site. We've got a rise of 0 0.482. We add that to the total because it's going up. So that's 10.124 and that's the distance. And that's the, the top of wall. Okay, that's, so there we go. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to take the one uh, which will be similar, the one straight across from that, and we'll take one at the bottom of the next one, one at the end, and we'll fill in the blanks, okay? The reading across the tape is uh, 8.3, and then we're going to take a reading now with the quick set level to get this point. So I'll put my distance, my distance on here, 8.3, um, other side of drive, Write that in. Now I'm going to take my reading. 1.46. So again, just booking the detail, the reading was 1.460. Take that away from that one, it is 0 0.200. So again, it's a rise, we're still rising, so I'm going to add that to the total 10.324. Okay, now this next one is going to be a drop because it goes down, so it's going to go into a negative number. And on that one, it's going to be a fall, and we're going to have to take it away. So we'll have a look at that one. Two point naught nine five, and I've just done the maths on that over here. Take away this time, take that away from that, and so that's actually going to be a fall of point six three five. Okay, a fall of 0.635. So we take that away from the 10.324 now, because it's a fall. So we're on to the last one, and the distance is 12.7. Okay, so I've written that in there, 12.7, and I've just got to do the foresight, which I'll do now. And that is 1.948. 1.948. Write it in the foresight. Once again, I've got to take that from that. 
So I've filled in all my sort of uh, boxes. What I've now got to do is to do the checks, which is some of the rises minus some of the falls equals last reduced level minus first reduced level which also should equal sum of the back sites minus sum of the four sites. Now if all those check out and are correct, I've done my maths right and I can plot the cross section. If I've made a mistake I've just got to go back through check my maths really and make sure that I've done it correctly. So that was the last last reading there. I'm just going to write and put that in my notes. So adding up the sum of the back sites minus sum of the four sites, you can see you've got 2.184 uh, minus 1.948 equals 0.236 at the bottom. We do the same with the sum of the rises, all the rise column added up minus sum of the falls equals also 0.236. And the last reduced level uh, which in this case 10.236 minus 10 is 0.236. Now they all worked uh, on this sheet, but on my original sheet you'll notice the mistake I made. So have a look at that. So I made a mistake, but when I did the proof, the checks, I found the mistakes. And that's why you've got this spreadsheet table. So always do your checks. Um, but that's basically how you do flying leveling. So let's have a look at the cross section and how to do it. So what we want to do first is to make sure that we plot the distance along the bottom. So we put all the measurements 0, 4.8, 5.2, 8.3, 9.3 and 12.7. And obviously you look at the, the Y axis, which is going to be your reduced levels. And I've just done 8, 9, 10, 11, but we're going to be focusing around about the 10. Obviously, if you're doing it on paper, you've got to choose your scale. I'm using a vertical scale, 1 to 100, horizontal scale. 1 to 100 and once you've done that and you've mapped the locations of each of the reduced levels it's just a question of doing the heights so you just transfer all the heights across so at naught it's 10 and you keep going across until you've plotted little x's how far up the reduced levels are once you've done that of course all you've got to do is to join the dots up Obviously, if I'd have taken more levels, this would have been even better, but it gives you an idea of how to do uh, a cross section. So you plot, join all the reduced levels together, and that then will give you your cross section. Okay, and uh, then if you want to, you can add sort of images onto that of the proposed level, or maybe if you want to do a sketch of what the uh, the two-dimensional sort of look of the garden or whatever it might be. So that's uh, that's how we can do a cross-section. Obviously, you're going to put a title on it as well. And uh, I hope you find that, that useful. So with the Moleshaw device, you have, again, a tripod, which you can extend. You have something which is going to collect the... Uh, data which is this device which you put into the end uh, like this just insert it in with the point facing forwards make sure this is all nice and set up level nice and straight and then what I've got to do I've got to attach my phone on the other end so I've got my phone what I'm going to do is to put that into the device it's not brilliant with the case on I've got to say uh, you do, you are better if you haven't got the case on, but obviously you might crack your phone, you don't want that. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go to the app. So on here you have an app, which is your Moashore app. And it's like three green lines, one long one, a small one, uh, vertical lines, and, and that one. And you can download that from the Moashore site. So I'm gonna click that, just have a look at it. Now I haven't actually uh, Bluetoothed it yet, so I need to do that, so I'm gonna just, scroll down I'm going to hit the Bluetooth and I'm hoping it comes up with my Moashore device it's looking for him it hasn't found it yet so I'm hoping that it'll find the device 
uh, just check I've got everything. Here we are, mower shore one. So now the mower shore device is on. I'm going to click that. Okay, it says an app is needed. Yeah, we know that. Okay, and then we'll go back to the app, open up the app, and we'll just pop it in. So sometimes it takes a couple of goes to get this uh, all up and running, but when it is up and running, it's a brilliant piece of kit. Oops, I've just gone and undone my holder, which isn't great. Pop that back on. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'll put my device, this stretches out, and then hopefully you can get your phone in. Say so it's a bit awkward with the case, um, which is a bit of a pain to be honest, the cases are, but it is what it is. Okay, so what I've got, I've got it in there in some shape or form. Uh, here's my, I'm going to just have a little check on it just to see whether it's reading. I'm just going to press the, we've got a menu. And then what I'm going to do, I'm just going to press close shape just to see if it's working. And then all you've got to do is press it on the floor. Okay, check devices on, so give it a little bit of a twist. Okay, just give it a little twist and then you'll see a blue light flash and away you go. And then what I'm going to do again, I'm going to put it on and just see whether that is working. And here we go, it is working now. You'll see a green bar go across and then when you hold it on the ground for a while it takes a reading. Okay, so I'm going to press stop there. So now I know it's working. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to just put it, I'm going to press the start button. I'm going to choose basically uh, from the menu, I'm going to press the plus. I'm not going to save that. I'm just going to press something like the open shape because I'm not going to close it. And all I'm going to do is take a series of readings across there. Okay, so we'll just have a look at that. We'll take some readings and all I literally have to do is to put this on the ground after I've started it. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just taking my first reading from here. Got that one. Go to the bottom of the wall. Got my second reading. Go to the top of the wall. Get my third reading. I can go along here. Get my fourth. Another reading here if we want. Go down here. Go over here. And we're just up here with the other one. So on this one we can uh, put a contour. It'll plot I can't quite see that there, but it will actually reveal the measurements. Uh, it will plot a contour of the map. Uh, on 2D it will show you what's happening with levels and different things like that so you can see what's happening. If you press on one of the readings you get the Z value and so that tells you the height on the Z okay which is quite useful so we can plot the cross-section okay or we can plot a cross-section between two points if we want to. There's various things it can do which is very fast. Uh, so that's quite useful. So that's mower shore, that's using the mower shore, which will plot the whole shape of the area as well and give you the height. So that's quite quick. So that's the modern day, or you've got total, uh, total sort of leveling devices. On the mower shore device, what you can do, it will actually plot contours. So you can read contours, it'll do a 3D image, um, it'll do a 2D image. So you can just plot just the outside of a shape. Uh, I'll put a link to uh, where you can get these uh, sort of instruments from as well. I uh, hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Um, we use flying levelling or series levelling when we want to do a quick cross section of a garden. It might be for cut and fill. It might be because you want to work out how much volume of soil to move or bring in. Uh, it might be just want a 2D drawing uh, or some cut and fill or you might want to build a bridge between two points. So that can be quite useful when you're working out the different levels. Um, okay, we'll see you next time.